Hi, I'm Matt Sadowski, and welcome to another edition of Mama Boards by Apps Flyer. I'm the Senior Director of Growth Marketing at Tidal, which is a celebrity-owned international music streaming service, similar to that as Spotify or Apple Music, but our differentiator is high-fidelity music, live streams, exclusive content, and original content as well. Now, I'm here to talk to you about how to stand up to mobile fraud, a topic that I am super passionate about because I've seen hundreds of advertisers get burned over the last few years. Now, mobile fraud is a huge problem, and it's been transforming over time. Now it costs advertisers in the mobile industry billions of dollars every year. And many advertisers who don't realize that they're buying it are actually buying large amounts of it. So I'm super excited to give you some advice on how to combat ad fraud on your side. So to jump right in, I wanna talk about what some of the different threats are in mobile marketing. Now at the very surface level, we have what's called click fraud. This is real traffic that's actually coming to your app organically, but is being misattributed due to a couple of different ways that fraudulent actors can kind of misattribute your traffic. Now, there's two main types here. One is click flooding and one is click hijacking. Click flooding is when a farm somewhere generates a high volume of clicks that's meant to capture device IDs of people that are installing your app organically and tricking your attribution platform, such as Apps Flyer, into thinking that it, the traffic actually came from a source that doesn't exist. Click hijacking is when, uh, uh, this is typically just on Google Play, but when a fake click is generated right before an install is attributed um, by the public API that's available on Google, uh, fraudulent actors can inject that click at the last second and again, trick your attribution platform into thinking the install came from somewhere else. Now, most of the time, your MMP or whatever fraud solution, you should catch this, but if you're not using a fraud prevention tool, there's a couple of really easy ways to identify this. The first one is a really high click volume. In some cases, you might see hundreds of thousands, millions or billions of clicks for spend that doesn't really match up to that. So that's gonna be a huge red flag. And because of that, and because this is just trying to capture a large amount of organic traffic, you're either going to see a very low click to install rate when it comes to click flooding, or you're gonna see sometimes a very high click to install rate when it comes to click injection fraud. You're also gonna see an unusual effective cost per click. This is one that I've been really into looking at recently, and it's great when you're talking to publishers about this as well, where you say, hey, you drove four billion clicks last month and we only paid you $100,000. The effective cost per click is less than a quarter of a penny. So at the end of the day, that's just not feasible. I could put my ads up on Google AdSense and make much more money off of that. So kind of something that just doesn't feel right and you should definitely look into a little bit further. And lastly is the click to install time. Now this is gonna come into play for both click flooding and click injection. For click flooding, you're gonna see that the average click to install time is actually very long. Most of your installs should happen within the first hour, if not the first couple of hours of a click. With click flooding, you might see installs coming in 10, 12, 15, 30 days later, depending how long your attribution window is. And that might be a big indication that that's not true organic traffic. Now for click hijacking, you're gonna see the inverse. You're gonna see your click to install time is very narrow. Um, within the first five seconds, 10 seconds, you might see a very high install volume, which just doesn't really make sense when you think about the fact that there are um, you know, thousands of clicks that occur on devices that have a long time that you, know, you need to wait for the internet to, to get going, you need to go to the store, you need to review the store, you need to install. It's gonna take at least 20 or 30 seconds for someone to really open up an app and start engaging with it from when they first click on your ad. Again, so this, this is real traffic. This isn't fake traffic. This is traffic that you shouldn't be paying for. This is organic. But these fraudsters are actually tricking your attribution system into thinking that it, it's something that you should be paying for. And it's a pretty basic attack, but it's still pretty common because most people, I wouldn't say most people, many people aren't fully protected when it comes to ad fraud. And if you don't know what those key indicators are and you don't have a solution in place to protect yourself, this is the easiest and cheapest way for fraudsters to really dive in and steal your traffic. Now, the scarier part is part two here, which is bot fraud. Bot fraud is traffic that is generally fake. It does not actually exist, but you're paying for it just like you would with the click fraud as well. Now, there's a couple of main types of bot fraud. There's SDK spoofing, 
emulators, and device ID reset. Now, SDK spoofing is when a bot will simulate the signatures within your attribution platform's SDK that make it appear that events are firing that aren't actually happening. This can be anything from an install to a post-install event. Emulators are uh, devices that will simulate mobile devices but don't actually exist within a mobile environment. So this allows people to generate large amounts of fraud without actually having to have a large amount of mobile devices. And device ID reset is when somebody uses the same device over and over and over again, but resetting their device ID to, think, to trick the attribution platform into thinking that a separate device was actually generating that install. Now, in none of these cases is this legitimate traffic that you should be paying for, but sometimes it could be really hard to catch and look very legitimate, especially in the case of SDK spoofing. I've seen a case where it looked like we had this great source of traffic really strong click to install rate, really strong day one retention, really high uh, early engagement that made it seem like this was gonna be a high quality cohort. But when we looked back at it about 30 days later, we realized not a single person had completed a purchase and this was actually SDK spoofing. So you have to be super careful when it comes to these things. Now, let's say you do have some ad fraud and now you need to think, how do I clean this up? Well, there's a few different ways that we can do that and that's how we catch ad fraud. So the first thing that you could do is implement an MMP or an attribution platform which has a really strong ad fraud solution. Your MMP has more data than anybody else that's relevant to, to ad fraud. They have the click timestamp, they have the install timestamp, they are the owner of the SDK that is often spoofed, and they can really let you know is there fraud that's occurring here. Now, you can also implement a third-party solution. There's plenty out there such as Scalar or Forensic that do very similar analyses and have large data sets that can sometimes supplement what you're seeing from, from an MMP, but not necessarily the case. And you may also have some internal tech resources, which is fantastic. If you have a data scientist that's well-versed in mobile, it couldn't hurt to add on an additional layer of analysis that's maybe more bespoke to your app. You might know things that uh, would be indicative of fraud that maybe an MMP wouldn't catch because they're more focused on upper funnel app fraud, but maybe somebody in-house could capture some of those down the funnel or in-app metrics that seem a little bit off. So you really could go full throttle here with a MMP third-party solution and in-house data scientist, but more often than not, you'll catch a good amount of fraud with just having a good MMP with a fraud solution in place. However, no tech is perfect. Even if they catch 95% of the fraud in all three of these solutions, or 99%, that remaining 1% of fraud you have can quickly become 100% of your budget if you're not smart. Because if you're still just buying from those one or two publishers that are sneaking through, you're gonna catch yourself in a really rough situation. Now, this happens because just as smart as everybody is on this side on stopping fraud, the fraudsters are just as smart as well. So it's a constant battle of trying to sneak through. Now, for the more advanced types of fraud, such as your bots, your SDKs, your emulators, and your device ID fraud, you're probably not gonna be able to catch too much of that manually. However, you can catch a lot of the more upper funnel basic fraud, which is your click fraud. Now, a couple of things you could do yourself as an advertiser is go into your MMP, download a bunch of data, and, and kind of do some manual analysis. And we talked about a few of these before, but one of the things that you can take a look at is your click to install time. You can download all that data, build out a graph, taking a look at your clicks over time, and you may see things that are a bit unusual. Typical click to install time is gonna look like a very steep rise and then a very sharp decline with a light drop off over time. So you'll see most of your installs occurring within one minute and 15 minutes of click. Anything outside of that of significant volume might be questionable. You could also take a look at the effective cost per, uh, clicks per second that you're getting. Now, I see this all the time um, with some click flooding. You'll see that you have, it looks like over the course of a day, 10,000 clicks from a single publisher. But when you dive into it on an hourly basis or a minute basis, you'll see that those 10,000 clicks were actually generated within one hour or even 30 minutes. And when you look at the math, there's no way that that publisher could have generated that many clicks in that amount of time. You could also take a look at the click to install rate. 
Now, there's a lot of debate over what the proper click to install rate should be. Personally, I typically look at a click to install rate which is above 0.1%. That's my bare minimum. I typically like to go higher. But anything that's below 0.1% means that less than one at every, every 1,000 clicks are installing. And that is highly suspect to me if you're going to say one out of every 50,000 clicks is installing, or I've seen even one out of every million. It's probably not real traffic. Effective cost per click, as I mentioned before, if your effective cost per click on what you're paying that publisher is less than a penny, it's probably not real traffic that that publisher is selling because they could get much better rates elsewhere just by selling their ads through Google AdSense, for example. And lastly, revenue per user or lifetime value can really let you know, are you actually driving value from that cohort of users? And that's really where it'll come in for helping you identify some bot fraud. Now, this doesn't always work because I have seen cases where bots are actually creating real purchases and arbitraging the cost that they're incurring on those purchases to the payout that you give them. But what you typically should see is that these sources are not going to be profitable for you at the end of the day. So make sure that you're always taking a look at the most finite level of publisher that you can and make sure that you're actually driving profit from those users. Now, let's say that you're in a case where you've identified fraud, you found fraud. Well, now you need to work with the publisher that, that generated that fraud in the first place and figure out, A, how can we stop this in the future? And B, what can that publisher do to me to make up for it? Now, there's a couple of different ways to work with a media partner. There's a proactive approach, and then there's a reactive approach. On the proactive side, you want to demand transparency up front. Often you'll see with an affiliate network or with a DSP, you'll get random number and letter uh, kind of publisher names. You know, publisher 147E62 doesn't really tell you much about where that traffic is coming from. But if you could see that that was enews.com, it gives you a lot more comfort in knowing that, okay, this was legitimate traffic. Versus if you saw that it was some random site that you've never heard of before, you might question it a little bit more and do some of your own investigation. You also want to sometimes do spot checks on the actual ad placements. Where possible, getting the uh, network or the publisher to be able to share a screenshot of, hey, here's where your ad was actually running. Now, again, this isn't always the case um, you know, to be possible when you're buying on an exchange and the traffic is bought in real time, you're not going to know where your ads appear ahead of time. But where it is possible, it's great to get these type of things under contract and to verify them. You also want to set really strong KPIs with your partners. Now, you typically want to set things like return on ad spend goals. You want to set things like retention goals. But you could also set things like click to install time, clicks per second, effective cost per click, to kind of make sure that beyond just your ROI goals, you're also hitting your ad fraud goals as well as in not buying ad fraud. But my one piece of advice is don't share all of your ad fraud KPIs with the networks. The reasoning being is that these people are incredibly smart. And the networks are incredibly smart, but I mean the fraudsters. The fraudsters will figure out how to get around the KPIs that you set. If you set a really strong click to install threshold, you're going to see that many people will generate a bunch of fake traffic um, but also putting in some real traffic. That's called blending. They'll blend in this mix to make it look like it's, it's legitimate traffic because it's hitting your KPI. So I always recommend withhold one key KPI that you don't share with the network that won't be passed down to the people that potentially generate fraud. And this is so that you can look at that back at yourself and say, okay, well, if they're hitting every other KPI that I have, but missing that one KPI kept for myself, maybe there's something up there. So always kind of keep that in your back pocket. Now, let's say you do all of that and there is still fraud. You can still be reactive. And this is negotiating with those networks, those affiliate partners, those publishers on actually clawing back money or making a make good. Make good is when they buy additional media to make up for the fraud that occurred or any other mishaps that maybe happened in the case. Now, in one of my roles, I actually had an experience where we uncovered a massive amount of fraud and actually was able to get a clawback of over half a million dollars based off of what we uncovered. And this was fraud that was missed by other, other sources of, of fraud identification. It was actually caught through some of the manual analysis. So that's why that can actually go a really long way. 
And when you go to have this conversation with your network or the publisher, make sure that you come with data because their first instinct is not going to want to be to give you back a half a million dollars. So make sure that you've done your manual analysis, you have your analysis from your MMPs or your third party solution, and you could present this in a way which is sound and makes sense. Now also check your contract when it comes to these publishers or networks because most of them do have fraud reporting windows. So make sure that if you do identify it, you bring it to the network as soon as you can. And really at the end of the day, just don't let the fraud get away with it. It's a massive problem in the industry and us as advertisers have just as much responsibility as the MMP such as AppsFlyer, the networks, the DSPs and the affiliate channels to clean it up. So I'm really excited uh, to kind of share these insights with you and hopefully we can all clean up the industry together. So that's it for today. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them below. And if you want to see more Mama Boards, make sure you click here. Thanks for watching.